This is the GAC Weekly presented by the Great American Conference. I'm Joey McWilliams. I'm joined today by Troy Mitchell, who is the public address announcer for this weekend. We're live at the GAC Volleyball Tournament 2018 edition. And Troy, I mean, I know there are so many things that you do and have done for not only Henderson State, for the GAC over the, the course of, of your time as the conference has been around too, but PA man today, how's that going? <laughs> well, I enjoy it. I love being around college athletics. Uh, I prefer that over professional athletics any day because I, I think the student athletes are the best in the world. They love the game. They're playing for the game, especially Division II. None of these kids, very few, are going to get a pro contract. They're playing their hearts out. And that's what I like college athletics. You're not talking about multi-million dollar figures that they're going to be making, unless it's in a different field, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yes. But, uh, but it's fun watching the competitiveness. And this volleyball championship has been great. I mean, one through eight, I mean, every match has been great. I think there's only been one match that was in three sets or less. And there has been some great student athletes playing. I mean, there has some, been some very competitive volleyball. Now, if we can get the rest of the region to recognize the Great American <laughs> Conference in yes. volleyball, that would help. But, uh, I mean, I think the level of volleyball has just skyrocketed in the last few years, and it's just going to get better. You see teams getting better, Southern Nazarenes. You know, a couple of years ago, they came out of nowhere and won it. Southwest Oklahoma, a great program. Arkansas Tech, Harding, traditional. You see Henderson winning, picked to finish in the top eight, finishing, you know, with record wins in the last 15 years. Right. And they only have one senior, you know, and they're, you know. So you just see all these programs building new coaches. Arkansas Monticello got a new coach, and she's trying to build a solid program, and they give her enough time and the resources it will be there and i'm telling you great american conference volleyball is on the rise and it's going to get better and better as years come and as we're recording this now there are two semi-final matches that will take place a little bit later on today and you can go to the conference website greatamericanconference.com check all the links there you can also watch it it's live on the gac athletics youtube channel as well so we're going to be broadcasting those and get that to you all four top seeds advance to the semifinals. You talked about Henderson State and State and Southwestern, uh, the number three seed, number two seed, respectively. They tied for second in the standings, and they'll be our first semifinal match. That's at 3:30 uh, today. This is Friday, and then the uh, other semifinal match at six o'clock tonight. Top seeded Harding taking on Washita. Both of those teams were taken to five sets uh, yesterday, too, in the quarterfinals. Troy, you've been uh, a part of the conference with Henderson State for a number of years as the Sports Information Director. I'm sure other titles to go along with that, but you've been in the sports information business for so many years and, and just recently inducted into the Hall of Honor at Henderson State. Congratulations for that. Thank you. What a big deal that is. Talk about your time at HSU. Well, I tell you, I, I said this in my Hall of Honor address and then in my retirement, um, uh, I couldn't have made a better decision than coming to Henderson State. Uh, the people there have been great. They they welcomed me with open arms as Yankee from Ohio with open <laughs> arms. It's 15 years. Um, I love the people there. Um, I said, I'm an Ohio University graduate, but Henderson State will always be right here with me. Uh, that ready spirit you, you have to experience. And I, I, everybody's about that, about, you know, a university that they're so close to. But I was very humble, never expected anything like that to happen to me. The, the outpour, the outreach of people that's come to me and congratulated me, and saying well deserved and we're going to miss you and everything. I said, I'm not going anywhere. I'm still going to be around. I mean, I'm working events. I love, I work in Henderson events. I do a radio for the football program and I'm going to do some announcing and I'm going to be around Henderson. And I, Work uh, some games at Arkansas Tech and Arkansas Monticello and in the GAC Sports right. Network and stuff. So I'm not uh, uh, I'm not getting away from them. I just uh, you know not putting you out to pasture. Just no, yet. no. Okay. It, it, the, you know, <laughs> I, I got some you know the health issues that I'm working on and trying to get some you know you know taking care of my health right. is the biggest thing, and uh, this allows me time to have you know work out, have surgeries and stuff, and get take care of myself but still be involved and you know we're not going anywhere we love it here and you know and I have like yourself so many great friends and colleagues come from this great American conference over the years and 
you know, and uh, it's it's been a blessing. And Henderson, you know, it was Sam Goodwin that brought me to Henderson State, and uh, and there's so many people you thank. Sean Jones has been just a, a remarkable person and has done so much for me, and uh, um, I can't thank him enough. And and Henderson wanted me to stay part of it, the program. Right. That you know. That is, that's what I want to do, and I, I, I'm happy. And uh, like I said, I get more time to take care of myself, but also stay involved in college athletics. Well, we appreciate what you do, and appreciate what you're doing right now. Of course, the uh, public addresser man, a uh, public address announcer man. <laughs> He's the PA guy. There we go. I'll just say it like that. Uh, it sounds great here at the Bank OZK Arena, and of course, uh, folks are invited to to watch the broadcasts. Now, I I would be remiss if I did not mention one other thing this weekend, and that is the Battle of the Ravine. What's that? What's that? I know. <laughs> Ever heard of anything like that? Uh, one of one of the greatest rivalries in college football between Henderson State and Washita. You've been a part of a number of those. So talk about what that rivalry means really quickly as Henderson State um, it looks like 5-5 five and five this year taking on a Washita team that, that's already clinched the conference title. So playing for pride, playing, playing for more, it's just a great rivalry, right? Yeah, and it is. It is. You throw the records out. Washita's so talented. What a bunch. Todd Knight's done a great job. And Coach Maxfield brought Henderson back from a program that was dormant to where it is now and I mean you know, they've had a couple last couple of years trying to rebuild you know that staff they've had like 20 some staff changes in the last four years mm -hmm. you know and, and that's the way it is at the division two level these guys wanting to be head coaches elsewhere and stuff like that you know and that's been probably the hardest thing for coach Maxfield but I'm telling you that it's a you're playing for pride. I don't know how many years I go back and research and one team has already won a conference or a chance to win and the other one, maybe won one or two, and the, there's an upset, you know. Yep. Uh, it's There's the the overtime game between when, a few years ago over at OBU that just went, oh, it just kept going on, going on and going. That, that and then 2013, that triple <laughs> overtime. Yeah, and, and, you know, the Kevin Rogers. Yes. Kevin Rogers and Darius Davis connections and, um, then the, the one couple years before that, uh, the, they kept Chris Rykoff, or Rykoff short of the goal line on the last play of the game. And, and then last year, OBU had a big lead and Henderson came back and OBU held him off. And uh, it is, if you're an Arkansan, well, if you're just a college football fan and you're around, you got to put that on your bucket list. It is just, the atmosphere is phenomenal to watch the visiting team walk across the street, right. to come to the stadium. You know, we had a golf coach several years ago take a, a driver and a, and a mid iron, hit from the Henderson end zone over to the OBU football two field, two shots, you know, a driver <laughs> yeah. and a mid iron. Right. I mean, it just tells you how close it is, it's nothing like it. And what's really neat, this is the 92nd meeting, and it's one game separates. Henderson has a one game advantage That's in, all those, in years, all those years, you yeah. know, and it's like 40 some games have been decided by less than a touchdown. That tells you how competitive, and that's usually what it is in a lot of these rivalries, but especially the most recent years. And, you know, it, it is, it brings community together. We have families that the wife went to Washington, the husband goes to OB, or Henderson, or one works at one place. And, but, you know, it's great for the community. It's great for college football, and hopefully, and I'm going to help spearhead it. Hopefully, Rex Nelson will join and others at OBU. You know, eight more, these will be the yeah. 100th. If we can get college game day down for the 100th <laughs> game, you know, right. you know, that is Call a goal. Call going line. forward right now. You know, that is, that is a goal, to get them down here for the 100th game. I mean, they've done it at a Division three school. Why not at a Division two school? Something, the most unique rivalry in all of college football. And, I mean, there's so many great rivalries in our conference, SAU, UAM, that's East Central, Southeastern Oklahoma. I mean, there's so many great rivalries, Harding, Arkansas Tech, but nothing like this where the team just walks across, <laughs> the, across the street with their band, their fans right. and everything. You know, it, it is fun. It is, it is a great time. And I'm telling you what, the weather, you know, it's going to be upper 40s, low yes. 50s, and beautiful, a 1 o'clock start. And, of course, fans that, you know, want to watch some of that can watch that game. 
stream live on hsusports.com and they can watch that as well. So if you can't get it and you want to, you can split screens and watch the conference volleyball championship in that game or whatever. There you go. You can, you know. So <laughs> it, it is. It's a lot of fun. And the good thing about having it streamed, you can come back and watch it later. That's right. <laughs> that, that is the cool thing. The players, players get a chance oh, to yes. watch it too. Well, yeah, don't forget that. That is to uh, tomorrow, uh, according to this broadcast, that is going to be Saturday and at kickoff from Arkadelphia, whichever school you're in, Arkadelphia at 1 o'clock. The volleyball final, by the way, will be on GAC Athletics on Saturday at 2 o'clock between the winner of Henderson State and Southwestern taking on the winner of Washita and Harding. Troy Mitchell, thank you very much for taking time with us today on the GAC Weekly. We appreciate that. Always a pleasure, Joey. You and Michael do a fantastic job, do a fantastic job for this conference. You guys mean a lot to the Great American Conference. We are very fortunate to have you guys as part of this conference, and we just look for you forward for many, many years to come, and I look forward to working with you guys thank here you. in the future. Thank you very much. This has been the GAC Weekly, presented by the Great American Conference. To hear this and more, and see this and more about college and high school sports, please visit oklahomasports.net and arkansasports.net, and check out the YouTube channel and subscribe. You may be watching us on YouTube right now. YouTube.com Midwest Sports Net. God bless you, everybody. Have a great one.